Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how to get um, 3D topographic data into Rhino using a website called Touch Terrain. The first thing you'll start in your browser, uh, search for Touch Terrain, and you should find a website like this. Go ahead and click on that, and it should take you to uh, an interface like this that has a map and some settings over here to the right. First thing I'm going to do is choose the location, and I can search for anything just like I would in Google Maps. I'm going to search for Steam Pump Ranch Tucson. And it took me right there. Um, now I can change the. Um, let's see, I can switch over the satellite so I can see a little bit better whether I'm in the right location. Um, it should automatically have created a red window, a red uh, box around the area. Or, um, I'm going to make sure I'm in top view there. A uh, red box around the area uh, on the map once I relocate it. And so I can just click and drag. You can you know, zoom in and out here. <clears throat> and you can also use control, control to zoom in and out. And I'm just going to resize my window so it goes all the way around the area where where I want topo data for. A little more, oh, we're actually, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so once you have your red window in the right spot, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, and down here at the bottom of the window, you'll see there's a scale bar. Now you can click on that and it'll um, toggle between different units. So I'm gonna keep it on feet. Uh, and what you need to do before you export the 3D model is uh, screenshot this. I'm going to use the snipping tool in Windows. Click New. And I want to uh, grab the area, including the part with the scale bar and the red outline. Once you've screenshot that, I'll, I'll save this somewhere. I've got the screenshot. The next thing that I need is my um, 3D model. So I'll go over to the right. You don't have to mess with any of the uh, settings over here. Just go ahead and click Export the green box. Take just a couple seconds. And then you should see a button show up. It says Download Zip File. I'll click on that. All right. And I'll go ahead and open that zip file. You will have to um, extract it before you can import it into Rhino. So right click, hit extract all. Just extract it right here in the downloads. Okay, and then it automatically opened it. Now the file that I want is the .stl. And I can just drag that right into my Rhino window. And I'll drag it into top view. I should get this little dialog that opens. I want to make sure I'm on import file. Okay, again, you can ignore this. We're going to scale it once it's in the file. Click OK. And there we go. So we have a 3D model um, in our Rhino space uh, <coughs> of the, you know, if I orbit, oops. Zoom extends here. If I orbit, you'll see, you can see that it's actually three-dimensional, even though the site that I chose doesn't have a lot of topography. But the, the next thing that I want to do is bring in that map so that I can scale it to the uh, to one-to-one. -one. Before I do that, I'm going to check my units. So down here it says I'm in inches. Type in units. I'll change into feet because that's what my L bar and my screenshot is. It uh, doesn't matter what you hit. Okay, and then I'll go back to where my um, screenshot was and drag that in as well. You can also use the command picture. You want to make sure you're on picture there. Click OK. I'm just going to click twice uh, to place it in my file. So there it is. And it should have that scale bar that I was talking about. So the first thing I'll do is scale my, uh, my map. Go to top view, make sure I'm in top. And scale. Then I'm going to snap as close as I can to like kind of the corners. So the furthest top right corner and then the other furthest top right corner. 
just to get as accurate as possible. I'll type in 200. Know that that bar is meant to be 200 feet. A little larger. Okay, so now that's scaled. Um, and what I need to do next is scale this one, I'll scale my 3D model up to match it. The first thing I'll do is move it. Just type move command, snap to one of the corners. So this object is a mesh. In order to snap to it, you'll need to have the vertex O snap turned on. And then, sorry, type in move. I'm going to snap to the bottom right corner and then I'll go and click to the bottom right of my red window. And I'm trying to get as close as I can right to the center of where those two lines are. See, this won't be perfectly accurate, but pretty close. So once I've placed that corner, then I'll scale this. So I'm typing in scale, zooming in again. I'll click to the corner because I know that's in the right spot. And then the next thing that I want to do, I'm just going to click again. I might have to do it more than once so I can do it more than once. One more time, type in scale. You could also, of course, just snap to the opposite corner. And then click on... Um, look over here where it lines up. So, now our Topo 3D surface is more or less uh, scaled uh, to one-to-one. -to -one. Uh, the next step, if you wanted to turn this back into like a 2D drawing with topography, you can make a contour. You would contour the 3D. You select the mesh. Um, you can make a new layer if you want for your contours. And I'll do, I'll do um, two foot contours. Okay, so I'm going to type in contour. Now, what it's going to ask for is a, a, a spot to start drawing contours. So I want to start at the very bottom of the mesh. I'm going to click on the, all the way in the bottom right, the corner vertex. And then the other thing it needs is a direction perpendicular, which in our case, we want to draw horizontal you know, topographic contour, so we're going to draw direction perpendicular to that is, is directly vertical, straight up and down. So I can just snap to the other corner. And then it needs a distance between contours. I'm doing two feet, so I'll just hit two, enter. And uh, you can see that it's created a contour map. So I can actually turn everything else off now. Um, now the other thing, if you zoom in close, you'll notice that these are actually polylines. And they can be a little bit jaggedy in places. So if you do want to smooth them out, you just select them all. And there's a command, a great command called smooth. Oops, let me zoom in a little bit before I run that command again. So like here, for example, we probably want that to be a little more smooth. Just type in smooth. Okay. And then the main thing, you don't really have to change much. Change this if you wanted to. Um, and you can also change the number of steps. So that looks pretty good. Click OK. You got nice smooth uh, contour lines. Um, and should all be scaled accurately and so on and so forth. Um, and that, that should conclude this video.